smartphones are quickly becoming the next generation director's viewfinder. Today, I want to take a look at Mark II Artist Viewfinder for iPhone and see if it's worth its $25 price tag. Hi, I'm Matt and this is QTime. Director's viewfinders have been around since the beginning of film. Back in the days when it was a time-consuming process to move a camera on set, it was important to know exactly where the camera was going next. The ability for a director to visualize their next move is also critical, especially on larger projects. However, they do have their downsides. As they're essentially a lens without a camera, it can sometimes be difficult to convey your vision to an inexperienced crew. As well as that, it may be sometimes difficult to carry around at all times, especially if you find yourself unintentionally location scouting. And that's where leveraging the power of something that's already in your pocket is a great way to go. While film purists obviously dislike the idea of replacing a specialized tool with a smartphone, it can take the director's viewfinders to new heights. So with that out of the way, let's take a look. When you open the application for the first time, you'll need to set up a virtual camera. This is because each camera not only has a specific crop factor, but also native aspect ratio and also sensor size. You can set up multiple virtual cameras, which can be useful for multi-camera shoots or if you own different cameras. You've got a huge array of cameras here, from stills cameras to motion cameras, such as the Arri Alexa, Red Epic, and even the Blackmagic 4K production camera. You can also select an aspect ratio, so it doesn't matter whether you're shooting 16 to 9 or anamorphic 2.39 to 1. You can still preview your frame. You then have the option to select the focal lengths you want to display for the virtual camera. You can add custom focal lengths if you need. You'll also notice that some of the focal lengths have wide written next to them. This is due to the iPhone's fixed length camera and therefore you'll need to purchase a wide adapter such as the Olo 4-in-1 lens to be able to display wider focal lengths. On the iPhone 5S, the widest we can get is the equivalent of 31mm on a full frame sensor, such as the Canon 5D Mark III. The addition of a wide adapter means we can bring this down to around 24mm, which is necessary if you want to use this as a full replacement for a director's viewfinder. Mark II Artist Viewfinder is compatible with different wide adapters, which are illustrated in the handbook, so I won't go over them here. Moving on to the interface, it's a fairly simple one. Starting from the main screen, we have the viewfinder itself, which displays these focal length guides over it. These are the same as the focal lengths you selected for the virtual camera, and by pinching to zoom, you can move in and out of the frame. You can also double tap a focal length to activate this cardboard cutout mode. The right toolbar has all of our commands. We have the menu button at the top, a function button, which we can program to do things such as change the aspect ratio of focal lengths, and then we have a quick control screen. From here, we can select our virtual camera, change our focal lengths, aspect ratio, and also enable or disable zoom frame, which scales the viewfinder to the aspect ratio and also displays an exact focal length on the top right corner. I usually keep this on. From there, you have the shutter button, but you can also use the volume up button as a shutter as well. Below, you have your focus and exposure locks. By default, both of these are continuously scanning. And right at the bottom, we have access to our previous views. When you take a shot, it's saved at the highest possible resolution depending on how far you've zoomed in. You then have what's called preview shot, which has the guides around it and the camera's name, as well as the full resolution shot, which has no overlays. You can easily view where the shot was taken, provided GPS was on and able to get an accurate lock. To export the mount, you have the ability to save the preview shot or the full resolution shot to your photo roll or email the photo, which also displays important information such as GPS coordinates. However, if you want to access all of your files, including GPS data and both full resolution and preview shots, you'll need to connect the phone to iTunes. I would have loved to have seen some Dropbox integration here. So how about accuracy? Well, as the handbook points out, there are many factors going against it, including manufacturing standards of the lenses, as well as focus breathing for many still lenses, which the app cannot account for. For the most part, I found the app to be fairly accurate. Worst case, it may have been out by a couple of millimeters due to factors such as breathing and distortion. My only other complaints for the app is the fact a wide adapter is basically necessary, which isn't so much to do with the app, but more to do with smartphone cameras in general. This brings up the cost of the app, but still keeps it lower than buying a physical viewfinder. Other than that, the app does everything it's supposed to, and the attention to detail is really quite nice. And there you have it, Mark II Artist Viewfinder for iPhone. Is it worth $25? Well, it's expensive relative to other applications on the App Store, but it delivers great value when compared to a physical director's viewfinder, which can often cost hundreds of dollars. Of course, I don't recommend it as a full replacement, and on shoot day, I'd rather prefer to have a physical director's viewfinder compared to the iPhone app, just because of ease of use. However, for location scouting and general planning of your shoots, the traditional viewfinder has absolutely nothing on the app. And the app does have the ability to do away with a physical viewfinder altogether. And that's why, for me at least, $25 is a price I'm willing to pay. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Q Time.